It is now time for the world famous Butch and Bob Show, brought to you by First Southern Bank, Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings, Murphy Butter Supply, and O'Quinn Associates Country Financial. Hi, I'm Mandy Yeomans. And I'm Raymond Brown with First Southern Bank. As your locally owned community bank, we're here to help our community grow. Our customers are why we are here. You can tell we want your business. We offer all types of deposit products, personal and business. We have fast, efficient service, and yes, we have online banking too. I'm sure we have an account to fit your needs. Stop by or call us at 912-588-1010 and see how First Southern Bank can help you. FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings Restaurant in Jessup is now open for business, practicing social distancing, but still serving that great food that Damon's is famous for. Come inside or come through the drive through but Damon's is open inside and welcomes back its customers. The menu's the same, the service is fast, and the food is fantastic, and the sauces remain the same, mild, wild, insane, or inferno. The number is the same, 588-WING, 588-9464. Damon's Restaurant on West Cherry Street in Jessup, dining room now open for business. Come on in and enjoy a great meal today. Since 1946, Murphy's Builder Supply has been serving the folks of Jessup, Wayne, and surrounding counties with quality products and knowledgeable service. Matter of fact, they feel they sell service first to make sure you get exactly what you need for your home improvement projects. And with each employee at Murphy's being there for 10 years or more, you know you're talking with someone with the experience to help you with building supplies, tools, paint, and all the things you need from a full-service hardware store. The best choice in home improvement is Murphy's Builder Supply, 156 Northeast Broad Street, Jessup. Country Financial is ranked number one in customer satisfaction for home insurance according to J.D. Power. Why am I sharing such big news instead of some mascot or movie star? Because at Country Financial, we don't invest in all that. We invest in our clients. Call me, Stephanie, at 912-588-1051 at Shauna Quinn's office to learn more about Country Financial's J.D. Power award-winning home insurance. For J.D. Power 2020 award information, visit jdpower.com slash awards. Home insurance policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Preferred Insurance Company, or Country Casualty Insurance company bloomington illinois the following is an exclusive presentation of jessup broadcasting the sports leader in southeast georgia the world famous butch and bob show World famous Butch and Bob show right here on WIFO 105.5 FM, WIFO FM and Jessup. The time now is one minute after eight o'clock. Good morning, Bob. How are you doing? I'm good. You doing good? Yep. All right. Well, we've got Dr. Reggie Burgess in this morning. Is that correct? Yep. The school's got a new app that's got all the information concern, concerning all Wayne County schools. And Reggie's on hand. He presented last Tuesday at the board meeting and thought it'd be good to let him come in here and talk to all Wayne County residents uh, how to get this app on their phone, what I was going to have on the phone. And, uh, Reggie, appreciate you coming in. So sure. I'll just turn I, it over to you. I appreciate you guys having me. Um, did you, just to give a little bit of background about how we came to this point, um, about this time last year, I was talking with Dr. Brinson, the superintendent at that time, and felt like we needed to improve how we're communicating with all of our stakeholders, not just the parents and the students, but also those in the community. Uh, because if you have a, ch- a child in the school system, uh, you're getting information uh, through a, a messaging system called Kinvo. Uh, but anybody can download the app. It's 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 public. So uh, give you a information, a little bit of information on how to do that. So if uh, if you have a smartphone, you can go to your phone's app store or Play Store and uh, just tap in uh, uh, tap uh, on there, open that up, and in the search bar, you'll put in Wayne County GA Schools. Be sure you put that GA in there because there are a lot of Wayne counties around the, around the country. So Wayne County GA Schools and uh, the company that that uh, makes this for us is called Aptigy. And so when you when you type that in, you you can tap on there quick download uh it'll 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 download just a few seconds and you'll have information um for all the schools all the schools as well as the school system our slogan for the app is keep the gold in your pocket because you know we're our, our colors are gold and white so that was a a quick uh, an easy way to remember there the our 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 app keep the gold in your pocket when you open up the app, I'm going to kind of talk a little bit about uh, uh, some things before we uh, move too far forward to give folks who might want to do that a, a chance to download it. Again, it's Wayne County GA Schools. Um, when you and you when you go to the landing page, it'll have the Wayne County School System and our WC Yellow Jacket logo on there. Um, there's two places you can go. The first is on the left side. It has a little black circle with three three red lines. 
And in there, you'll see the live feed, the news, events, staff, documents, notifications, settings, and scores and schedules. Uh, it automatically defaults to the school system when you download the app. And I can, I can explain how to go to a particular school here in just a moment. Um, as, as, Folks may be downloading that. I want to mention too that our, our improved communication. Uh, we we have this system called Kimbo that I mentioned, and that's like a text <clears throat> mes- text messaging system. And when when a message goes out, it either goes out to a particular school, the parents at a particular school, or uh, for the school system as a whole. And one of the things that we we talked uh, a, a lot of parents have told us is that uh, they like getting notifications, but when you've got say three three kids in the school system, you might have a student at James E. Bacon a student at Martha Puckett and a student at the high school. Well, if each of those schools sends out three or four notifications every day, you know, that's a lot of notifications to get at one time, and they all come through your text messaging. So parents are, are liking the communication, but sometimes it gets to be too much. So we, are, we as a school system are trying to find a way to strike that balance of communicating enough but not too much. Um, so and, and the app's going to help us do that. Um, the live feed and the news features on the app are information. You could look at it as if it's information sitting there waiting for you to go and get. It's not pushed out uh, through, an, through an app or through an a, a email message or anything or a text message. It's just there waiting for you to go see it. And uh, the uh, the app works in conjunction with our new website. We just li- went live with a new website on Friday, and these two uh, two things here, these uh, app and the website, go they work hand in hand. So when something gets updated on the website, uh, it automatically gets updated in the app. So live feed and news, the schools will be putting a lot of information out there. Say, for instance. Uh, Spelling bee. Uh, a, a child uh, uh, at one of the schools uh, gets uh, uh, wins a spelling bee, and the media specialist puts on the uh, the live feed, the, the, a picture and a little notification there um, about the about the student. Well, that goes into the live feed, and if parents want to go see it, they can go see it, but they don't get to necessarily get a text message about it. Uh, events uh, will be just uh, school level events that are going on, maybe like an open house coming up or. Uh, other parent events, things, uh, things going on um, at the school level. You can go in and tap events and find out what's going on at a particular school. The staff feature is really neat because uh, you can go in and, and tap on staff, and all the employees in our school system are there alphabetically by last name. So if you want to go in and send somebody a text, uh, uh, an email message, you tap on their name and send email, and, it, on, and, and you just it's just like sending an email through whatever Outlook or whatever email or Gmail or whatever you use. Uh, so that's an easy way to find all of our staff members. Members. Um, documents and uh, will have some uh, different things in there, such as uh, athletics, uh, things that parents might need. It might have like the school systems or the schools uh, uh, supply list, school supply list, and also list the departments uh, that are, are listed at the board office, like curriculum department, technology department, special education, and things like that. So you can find information uh, on those uh, for, on, on the document setting. The settings will allow you to. Uh, either choose your default as a particular school. So if I, if my child goes to Wayne County High School and I only want to get notifications from there, I select Wayne County High School and that's the only school that will send me notifications. You also have the option to turn off notifications. If you don't want to get those, you can just slide the little bar there and you'll still have access to everything on the app, but it will not send you, uh, notifications directly. Um, some of the things that are on there, scores and schedules, there's not anything in there yet because we haven't, haven't had any athletic events going on. But once we get those out there, the schedules and the scores will be posted um, in there also. On the right side of the app is a little black button with a schoolhouse. And what that allows you to do is go in and choose a particular school. Say, for instance, I want to choose uh, Martha Smith Elementary School. I tap on there, and there's a notification, or I'm sorry, a live feed uh, that was put on there a few months ago. They've not updated it yet, but they will be soon. All the schools are going to be updating information in the live feed um, as, as soon as the teachers and the media specialists and all get back in the swing of things. Um, the app, as I mentioned, is brand new. Uh, it's 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 uh, li- the the uh, website went live on Friday. Oh, let me mention something about our website also. The uh, G- the Georgia Department of Education owns our domain that Wayne that www.wayne.k12.ga.us, and so we had to work with them in order to go from our old website to the new one. Our old website was was several years old and just really wasn't that user friendly, and so we we wanted to uh, get something that was a little little more. Uh, 
user friendly, look a little better, a little more modern, and that's what we have with this. So uh, we uh, we have that uh, on um, going live now. That's that's actually up and running. So if you were to type in that that URL, that www.wayne.k12.ga.us, it will automatically take you to the new website. And we migrated the information that was on the old site into the new site. And so I know, like with anything that's new, there's going to be some weeping and gnashing of teeth uh, but when, when people are looking for stuff to try to find it because it's, it's in a new new view. Uh, but once you get on there and navigate it a few times, you'll be able to see that it's, it's pretty user friendly. So once again, how do the people put the app on their phone? Uh, go to your apps, your app store or your Play Store if you have the if you have an Apple. Go to the App Store if you have an Android. Go to the Play Store, uh, open that up, and when you type in Wayne County GA Schools. Uh, it'll bring up Aptigy is the little company that is the company that does that. And when when you uh, just clap, uh, click install, and or as we say in the south, in the south, mash. We don't click things; we mash things. We mash buttons. Um, put the button for Wayne, Wayne County GA Schools install, and it'll automatically download. Take about thirty seconds. As you mentioned, it started on Friday. Do you have any idea how many people have the app? Uh, right now, we have about seven hundred people who have it. Seven hundred people. Yes. Like I said all the information in the schools is on this app. From all schools, right? So That's correct. From post. the system and the schools. So, so again, we just encourage everybody if they want information on the school system, it's the easiest way to go about doing it. Like I said, it'll be updated daily. Is that correct? Correct. And mm-hmm. you don't have to have a child in the school system to do this. It's it's a public app. Uh, anybody can download it. So if you if you're just if, you know if you're a football fan and you want to be able to see the football schedule, uh, download that app and click on scores and schedules, and it'll it'll be there for you. Oh, and I also wanted to thank Loray Thornton at the high school. She's our media specialist at the high school. Uh, we we uh, brought her on board as our webmaster. She has pretty much totally designed this website and gotten, gotten it up and running for us. And we would not have been able to do this without her. She has been awesome. So uh, kudos and shout out to Loray Thornton. Good dope. And, again, open house is set for August 5th. That's correct. 3.30 3.36. That's for all schools. Right? All schools, yes. Uh, uh, and we're look. We're hoping, and, and I know there's been some information sent out there over the uh, over media about the uh, the CDC's recommendation for masks. Um, and I was going to just kind of head this off and let you know at at this point. I talked to Dr. Kelly yesterday, but at this point, we are still hoping to go back to as near normal as possible. So um, the decision has uh, has been made to uh, go back without masks. Um, we, we don't know what the future holds as far as um, if that'll change. You know, as things uh, progress with the with the with the uh, virus and all, but at this point, we are still planning to go back to school uh, without mask and as near normal as possible. Mm-hmm. Are y'all doing anything to encourage uh, staff? Uh, the Board of Education, all staff to get uh, vaccinated? We have sent some information out. We're, we're not encouraging. We're just offering information. Just offering. Not yes. encouraging, but just offering. Right. It's, it's an individual decision. But we people are, uh, they can wear masks as they choose. Uh, we're not mandating that they do at this point. But, um, you know, if, if, if people feel comfortable wearing a mask, they're certainly, they can do that. Okay. And then, of course, uh, the, you, the vaccine situation, you're just encouraging them. You're not requiring anybody at this particular time to be able to uh, say, if you're going to work for us, you've got to have, be vaccinated. Is that right? Right. Okay, yeah. and I know the COVID. Uh, we have a COVID nineteen task force here in our in our community. The community leaders comprise that, and uh, they are sending out information to the community about uh, just they are encouraging uh, people to get the uh, the vaccination. Uh, and the the information on there on that little letter that they're going to have has some of the myths that people uh, might encounter with with the the vaccine. You know? So it's just an information and, and to let people uh, be educated about it. Okay. Do you know what percentage of um, of the Board of Education, I think you have somewhere around 800 employees, do you know what percentage is it, are vaccinated? I sure don't. You no. don't? No, no stats on that at all? No. Okay. Just didn't know. We know Bob and I found out yesterday, and our jaws just about hit the floor, uh, when we had a couple of nurses in here promoting uh, a couple of weeks ago the uh, the, the – vaccine clinic at the hospital that less than 30 percent i think it's right around 26 27 percent somewhere in that area of uh, wayne county is 18 plus are vaccinated wow mm-hmm. just that's it you yeah. know people wonder why is this why is the why is the uh, the virus spreading so quickly well most people have not been vaccinated even right. nationwide it's you know less than you know i think it's around 40 percent or something mm-hmm. like that and so um, anything I know that they've talked about uh, offering the uh, vaccine clinics or encouraging uh, uh, young folks to be able to get the vaccine. Do you know anything about that from ages 12 to 17? I, I don't. You I don't. don't. Okay. No, I, didn't know, I didn't know if the school system had got the memo from the states uh, from the uh, from the state school superintendent or anything like that when it comes to vaccines for um, for the younger for younger kids. I've not seen it. Nothing at all from them. Okay. 
just just wondering because it's starting to kick back in full time, and we're getting uh, rec- we're getting numbers each day of people infected, just kind of like last February. And so I didn't know uh, what was going on there. You know, Savannah's gone back to mandatory masks, and so it was Liberty County, and uh, you know, and their government offices, and you know, the things that are involved with the city governments and county governments in those areas. So it'll be interesting to see. If it, anything comes down from the governor's office or from uh, from any of the other uh, agencies in Atlanta, right? Okay, it's getting real interesting. It's, I mean, Savannah yeah, I mean, schools, it's kicking in big time. Savannah mm-hmm. schools requiring masks. Liberty County schools requiring masks. Getting a little closer. You know, Liberty County is only <laughs> forty miles down the road. So right. Be interested what Long County decides to do. I'd be curious what they're doing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, some some. Uh, businesses out there are requiring employees to be able to get the vaccine if they're going to work there because they're going to be around the public and so forth. Do you think at any time in the future that will ever become mandatory? Is it ever any talk of that in any type of way in, uh, in teachers and, 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 uh, and, and other Board of Education employees at all? There's not many discussion that, that I no know No discussion of. at all. Just here's the information, no encouragement or anything like that. Just here's the information, and you make the decision from there. Right. Okay. Will the air filter still be running this year? In Absolutely, the school? yes. And every every classroom has an air filter, and they are okay. they are up and running. Okay, all all classes now. Remember, we started promoting that last year. It was just getting started, but all classes, uh, yeah, because that, that's a big thing. Because as we found out in, with the virus, uh, the fact that it was seemed to be spread more through the air than it actually did touching surfaces. Right. And so it was good that they were able to get those air filters in these classrooms because you know you're talking anywhere from, you know, twenty five to thirty people in a, in a small enclosed area, you know, for fifty minutes. So it's mm-hmm. interesting to to see. Uh, it's interesting to 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 to, uh, to understand how that could be spread throughout the room when you've got that many people in a small room, you know, hour after hour after hour through the day. So it's right. good that we got the air filters in there. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay. They've been great. All right, so just wanted to see where we were with that because uh, it seems to the, the information seems to be changing daily right now when it comes to the COVID. I mean, that's right. You could have all these policies today, and next thing you know, you get a mandate from the governor's office or from the from the uh, state school superintendent's office saying, "Well, we've got to do this." And next thing you know, we've all got to do something. That's you know? right. Yep. All right, Bob. Any other questions or comments no, for Doctor Reggie Burgess? This appreciate morning? you coming in. Like I said, hopefully everybody get the information about the app and get on their phone. And if you want all the information from the school system. It's an easy access on your app. That's so, correct. So also, I was like, good. who came up with the slogan, keep the gold in your pocket? That would be me. That would be me. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Reggie. <laughs> hey, you going to take credit for that because it was I, him. That one, that, that one I get. <laughs> I try to keep a low profile. But, yeah, that was just something that we wanted to be, you know, folks to be able to remember it by. Okay. Keep the gold in your pocket. Sounds good. All mm-hmm. right. Appreciate you coming in. Yes, sir. If you got anything else for the public to know about, just let us know and you come back on, all right? Sure will. Thank you. All right, Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO, 105.5 FM, and Jess and more of the world-famous Butch and Bob Show in a minute. When further treatment is no longer an option, hospice can provide services to manage symptoms and difficulties caused by illness, emotional, psychosocial, and spiritual care, as well as support to the families and caregivers are all part of hospice care. Hospice of South Georgia has been a part of the health community in Wayne and surrounding counties since 1998. The professional yet compassionate attention provided by our staff is unsurpassed. Widely supported by donations from the local population, Hospice of South Georgia is the local nonprofit hospice in Wayne County. Our administrative office is located at 1625 Sunset Boulevard, and Hospice of South Georgia accepts anyone who meets hospice criteria, regardless of their ability to pay. Please call 912-588-0080 to speak with someone about hospice care. That was 912-588-0080. We are your hometown hospice, and we are here to serve you. Hospice of South Georgia. Working to add life to your days. 816, 105.5 FM and Jess of Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO. And, um, well, here we are on a Wednesday morning, 28th day of July. Bob, what's going on? You got something in front of there you want to talk about? Or are you just reading it? <laughs> you just reading what Dr. Reggie Burgess gave you. <laughs> All right. Braves win big. That was nice. Yeah, good win Can by the Braves. Win two in a row. That's the key. Can they win tonight and snap? I mean, they have not won two games in a row since the All Star break. I know it's win Maybe. one, lose Bruce one, lose one, yeah, go back I mean, and forth, back and forth. Four games out of first place right now. Got a chance to get within two. They can win these next two games against New York. It'd be nice to get other two games from the league. So it would be. But Australia had a big night, grand slam, two run home run. Ozzy Albies hit a home run. So big night for the Braves. So hopefully they can put it together. 
It's amazing they scored 12 runs in one game and they scored none. In the next. None in the next, you know? <laughs> uh, I guess it's who's on the mound, huh? <laughs> it, it's really hard to understand that sometimes when you can just score so many runs. It's just like you're in the groove, and then the next night you're not in the groove. Just looking at the two teams, Braves just look like so they got so much more talent than the Mets. Just can't believe they're not in first place already. But hopefully by the end of the year, that's where they'll be. I mean, hopefully by the end of September, they'll be back in first place. You know, they won the Eastern Division last three years in a row, and we're one out away from going to the World Series this past October. So it'll be interesting to see what happens this year. So much good. The, the problem is there's no wild card coming out of that division. Look at the other division. So you got to win that division to get in the playoffs. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. Well, what do you think about uh, Texas and Oklahoma? Looks like they might be coming into the SEC. It looks like it's a done deal. So it's all about money. Well, it's always about them. We always talk about that for the last you know, 25 years. It's always about the money, honey. And they're talking about, you know, for how, how should you divide up the, uh, the SEC when they come in? You know, you're talking about, some people are talking about moving Alabama and Auburn to the eastern side. You know, the story is they're going to have four conferences. Four have, conferences. North, south, east, and west. There's going to be four in each of them. There are going to be 16 teams in anyway. Four, 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 and four. That's what they're going to do. And then what do you do? Have a playoff to get yeah, into? I mean, playoff drive, yeah, and all that good stuff. So. These guys are going to be beat to death by the end of the football season. <laughs> Yeah, I just know if you're in the SEC, you could have a brutal schedule. You know, I know. I mean, these guys I mean, are going to be more completely it. out. You sit there and say, first trip LSU home against Oklahoma, and then you go to Alabama. Thanks for coming. You know, so. But when they expand the playoffs, it won't matter. You know, they'll take four or five out of the SEC ends of the playoff tournament, and they'll let it roll. I said the only one squawking about is Texas A&M. Texas A&M is upset that Texas is coming in because. Right now, Texas A&M has the advantage of recruiting. Right. You can come in the SEC with Texas A&M. If Texas gets in the SEC, they don't have that advantage in recruiting. Right. Yeah, so that's – And what conference is Texas and Oklahoma in? The Big now? 12. They're in the Big 12. So will that go to, like, the Big 10? I thought there was already a Big 10. I don't know, I don't know what they're going to do. But, and why do they want to leave the Big 12? I mean, it seems like they would be able to dominate more in the, other than the money, all right? Yeah, the money. That is the main thing. That is the main thing is the, is, the, is, the, is the TV deal. TV the, deal. The TV deal and the SEC schools, each SEC school in 2024 getting a nice $67 million. $67 million. The big, the big 12 gets $40 million apiece. So there's a difference with $27 million. It seems like you have a better chance of winning the conference if you're in the Big 12 than it would be in the SEC. But they play – there's a lot of and there's a lot of games that just empty – there's not too many empty stadiums when Oklahoma and Texas join the SEC. I mean, right. If Oklahoma's playing Alabama, it's packed. If they're going to play Georgia, it's packed. Auburn packed. When they play those other schools, it's Yeah, half it's full. not. Well, I so guess they figured that Nick Saban money. can't stay around forever, so <laughs> things will open up a little bit when he, when he uh, retires. It looks like it's a done deal. I said, I'm sure they'll get the votes needed. I said, they hope to have it in place by the next football season. That so. means they're going to have to change schedules around because, you know, football schedules are set three, four, five years in advance. Right. So, if, you know, if you're looking at not this this next season, you're talking about 20, 2023 or 2022? 2023? They're talking about 2023. Okay, so not next, not 20 next year, but the year after. Yeah, so I'll have to move some things around a little bit then. But everybody seems gung ho. Bring him in. Bring him in. More the merrier. Boomer sooner, boomer sooner. It'd be fun. Oklahoma. <laughs> it's a long trip to Oklahoma for a football game. Yeah. So not the Easter, not the East Division or the West Division. Uh, the, four. The proposal uh, also, they're going to put four. They said they'll expand to sixteen teams, and there'll be four in each each bracket. And so if you win what, that bracket, I don't, that I don't you play know, another yeah, one. I don't know which four teams are. You know, I haven't seen. You know, but that's the uh-huh. that's the proposal. They're not going to have a two east. They're going to have four, four mm-hmm. teams in each right. little portal. So. Okay, so it was a little bit different than what I read yesterday. If you had the east west, you'd put Alabama and Auburn in the east, and you'd put Missouri and Arkansas in the west. Stay in the west, and along with the ones out there. But if we have four, that'd be a little bit different. So it's going to be interesting to see how it turns out. I guess four. I guess four. You know, four divisions would make it better because you have more people, the more teams with the opportunity to, to advance to the, the SEC playoffs, championship right. game. Yeah, which means what, Bob? More right. money. <laughs> the grease money. that makes the world go around. <laughs> uh, grease money. my palm. More money. 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 
Yeah. Yeah, more money. It's all about that, Bob. Because if you don't have that, if you're looking at Texas and Oklahoma, if you're only getting forty something million being part of the Big Ten, you're getting sixty seven million as part of the SEC, and money makes the world goes around. Apparently, and especially in football, um, you will get left behind, and they don't want to get left behind. So sixteen teams. That 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 is just one super conference right there. I mean, that is going to be something else because you got the Big Ten, you got the Pac Ten, Pac Twelve, Pac Twelve. All right. Big 12. So, okay. Other teams, you know, Georgia, you know, the ACC is looking to expand as well. You know, they want Notre Dame to come in full-time. Full-time so now. They're trying to get them, but Notre Dame, you know, speaking of money, they don't want to give up that. Well, they kind of exclusive contract, contract with NBC, right. yeah. But, but the thing is, they're in the ACC and everything else. So All they, the sports should, football. They should, the ACC should force them in. And, uh, like you say, look, oh, they're just thankful to have him in the other sports. You know, they uh, like the name Notre uh, Dame. We got them uh, in the conference. Yeah, but, I, I just think they just need to get on board and okay. share the wealth a little bit. It'll be interesting to see what happens, Bob. They're not practicing their religion. They're supposed to be they're supposed to be nice and share. They're not supposed to be, <laughs> not supposed to be greedy. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Where's the Pope when you need him? He's to step in and tell Notre Dame to get on board here. <laughs> yeah, well, as long as NBC is putting on paper and all that money for the exclusive contract, I don't think you're going to see it change, Bob. Those Catholics should be practicing what they preach. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Being a good Catholic boy, I know that. So yeah, so. yeah, I know, I know. I, mean, I love Notre Dame death, but come on, they need to. Share the wealth. Well, oh, why do you want them in the ACC? I mean, if they're in football and they're because they're, they're in the ACC football. and everything else, I don't think it's fair to just sit there. It's football. Fair to what? Fair, fair to who? Fair to those other ACC schools? Yeah, but you know, if you're another they're ACC play, school, you don't want Notre Dame in your conference of football. Them, less chance for you to win the conference. They're letting them play ACC and everything else. Yeah, but you know, if you have Notre Dame's in football, that's your less chance of winning the conference. If you got a, a quality <laughs> top football program there, I can understand why the other ACC teams would not want them. It's supposed to play be a football. stronger conference. I mean, just just like just like Oklahoma and Texas. Yeah, the reason to let well, them that in. It makes it stronger. Makes it stronger. Same yeah. thing with Notre Dame. Makes them it stronger. makes it stronger, huh? So they should force them to get in there. Okay. And the only reason they're not is because they got their lucrative because NBC they got their contract. NBC contract. What I'm saying as nice Catholic people, they should be <laughs> sharing the wealth. <laughs> they are sharing the wealth with the people Themselves. that are on campus. Right. <laughs> with the players, the facilities, the coaches. <laughs> You're sharing that money with a lot of folks, Bob. <laughs> not, not, not but if good. they if they go into the ACC, they won't be sharing that money with anybody because there won't be any more contract with NBC. They'll go with the ACC contract. I'd just like to see him in the ACC playing Clemson and FSU every year. That'd be fun to watch. Okay. But well, right those now it's just Clemson and uh, FSU have been that great lately, but yeah, maybe they'll come back one day. Bonds back. Yeah. They won't stay down Miami, maybe, you know. Uh, Miami, Virginia, North Carolina. Uh, Mac Brown's done a good job at Carolina. Yeah, They're a pretty yeah. good football team. So. But it's just interesting. Okay. As long as they expand the playoffs, it's not going to matter anyway. That's what they're going to do. Expand it from four to eight, six. They're what? Talking twelve. Is twelve. Ah, word. These people will start practicing football in July and not be through into February. <laughs> Poor kids. But many of them can start making some good money now with their likeness and their image and everything. That's out of control. It'll mm-hmm. be interesting to see how what some of these players start making with that likeness and image and stuff like that. Will that make some players it'll be the have and have nots when it comes to the sports? I haven't seen many coaches happy about the situation. They understand it, but they're like, they just they think it's just going to be causing problems in the locker room. And yeah, well, it's, gonna, yeah it's going camp. to cause problems. It's going to take away so, the focus from yeah, some of those players just, to their craft. But yeah, yeah. Not, you know. if you got people making money off of you, then do you deserve the right to to be able to to share in that? But you are getting you know free room and board and. Education, all paid for by being a student athlete. Do they call them student athletes anymore? Or they just call them athletes now. <laughs> Do you still have to keep a, a grade point average? Yeah, I, mean, I guess you still yeah. have to keep the grade point average and go to your classes and all that to be able to that student athlete to be able to keep that scholarship to stay on the team. You know, and will you have uh, and will you have schools that uh, say, "Well, we can get you this better deal"? 
if you come over to our school. Do you have to go to class? You make a million dollars. Mm-hmm. I mean, the quarterback Alabama's making a million dollars. A million dollars. You have to go to class. Yeah, yeah. because if you're going to play, you've, you've got to pass, <laughs> and you got to be a student athlete if you're going to be a, a a football player or whatever the case may be for any of these teams out here. Still got to be a student athlete, Bob. Because if you're not if you're not in classes, if you're not passing, you can't be a student athlete, which means you can't play for that team. If you can't play for that team, then you can't make the money. I just thought it was interesting. Nick Saban says we haven't even given the starting job yet. He's already got a million dollars in his pocket. Yeah. I guess he is the starter <laughs> by default, yeah. I guess. And does it put too much pressure on these kids to be able to to perform? Just amazing. Is that what happened to you know the our, our gymnast here for the United States? Does she have too much pressure on her that she – Mentally had to withdraw from the Olympics. And they said she was injured. You know, I hate to she that. said it was mental. Right, okay. She said it was mental. That's what she said. She was having mental issues. It's right, okay. what she told folks. I'm having anxiety, mental issues, and I cannot perform to my best of my ability because of mental issues. And so she's decided to to withdraw. Well, it's good to see that the uh, men's basketball team won a game. I mean, geez, these guys get paid millions of dollars every single year. They ought to be whopping up everybody. But when you, yeah. it shows you it's a team sport. It's not an individual sport. It's a team sport. Cause at least you, the spread made it interesting. I said they were favored by 50. They won by 54. So that's what people. <laughs> that was against our, what, Iran yeah, or something like that? Iran. At least they covered the spread. So that was pretty good. At least they bounced back. So supposedly they've never won the gold when they lose a game. So it'll be interesting if they can win the gold. But they lost to France, which was very shocking. Was there any anybody for France? Were they any NBA yeah, players they had on some that? NBA, yeah, yeah. Are there some yeah. NBA players from France? Yeah. Okay. There's some NBA, you know, there's some NBA players from all these foreign countries. There's a lot of those foreign countries, especially yeah. some of the. All right. One guy, I can't think of his name. I can't remember. He played. He scored fifty six points or fifty four points in there. Oh wow! So, okay. So there's a lot of NBA players playing. In okay. Other teams. All right. You don't watch much of the Olympics. I haven't watched. I much haven't watched of any of it. No. No. I, I hear the results and that's on the radio, that, and that's about it. Hard to watch with no fans. It's just weird. Yeah. But I've been watching some of the swimming and diving. Yeah. Okay. Well, Bob, we are anything else in your mind this morning? Nope. That's All it. Right. That's it. All right. Have a good day. All right. It's 830, the world famous Butch and Bob show brought to you by First Southern Bank, by Damon's Famous Fingers and Wings, Murphy Builder Supply, and Aquino Associates Country Financial. Several people will have a chance to win four free tickets to Wild Adventures Park coming up in just a few minutes right here on Big Dog Country Radio.